I want to get started by uh, polling everyone in the audience. So uh, I want to ask, have you ever used a child theme before? Uh, by, re by show of hands, if you've used a child theme before. And, well, OK, ah, fantastic. Well, this is uh, intended for everyone that, that, uh, that wants to know a little bit more about child themes, but it's really just an overview of how child themes work. Um, I intended it for uh, beginners, for anyone interested in theme development. And uh, so I hope you're able to uh, take something from it. My name is Joseph Dixon, and I am a web developer at Pitzer College in Claremont, California. And that's about uh, 30 miles east of here, uh, right on the border with uh, San, Bernardino, or San Bernardino County. So I've been using WordPress now casually since 2009-ish. I honestly don't remember the first time I used it. And um, child themes were introduced way back in WordPress 2.7 Coltrane. That was the earliest reference I could find to child themes, although I suspect they may have been around a little bit before that, um, hence the asterisk on this uh, slide. Um, simply put, a child theme inherits features from a parent theme. So what's really useful about this is if you create a very basic child theme, everything that gets pulled into your uh, final website project is essentially the parent theme. So what I mean by that is practically every theme is a parent theme. Uh, in some of these examples, I'll be using 2017 because it's been around for, what, two years now? And, um, and, and it provides the ability to, child themes provides the ability to tweak and change the existing theme uh, that you're using as the parent. It's actually a, a core mechanism within WordPress to allow you to make uh, changes and improvements to a theme so that you can customize it for your project, whether it's improving color contrast or something as simple as just changing some uh, colors of fonts. So uh, really the top reason for why we should use um, child themes is so that the parent theme will receive updates and your child theme will remain completely untouched during that update, update process. Uh, something I wish I knew how to do back in 2012 when I started working with WordPress every, every day. I would go in and I would make the changes to the, uh, to the existing theme and I would save it and then I would hit update on the, uh, on the theme and then I would lose all my changes. So that's essentially how I learned about child themes, was Googling, why did I lose all my code? Uh, <laughs> I did have a backup. So, so the uh, advantage of a child theme is when that update runs, your child theme is a, in a completely separate folder. So from that respect, it's, it's separated from the parent theme. You can speed up development time. This is uh, super useful if you're working on a quick website for a friend, a colleague, or even your work. And um, all you need to do is make a few changes, add a few features, and you've already got that, that base parent theme available from the uh, original maintainers. And, and whenever they push those updates, you get to receive those updates uh, and it benefits you in the long run because it will reduce the amount of work you have to do as a web developer or a web designer to maintain that project. You're only maintaining your code. So to get started with child themes, we really only need two files, uh, style.css and functions.php. And you will end up putting that in a folder, which you'll then upload to uh, your uh, website. So to start out with uh, uh, style.css, this is the, um, the co comment block on your style.css. If you've ever looked at, the, at any WordPress theme before, this will look familiar. It tells WordPress what your theme does and how it functions. But with child themes, it's a little bit different. There's a few additional um, bits of information. 
So um, I'm going to break it down just in case the, uh, the slide doesn't make it to the video uh, later on. Uh, with style.css, you have the, um, in the comment block, you have the theme name. So in this case, if uh, you were to head over to my website, you could download a child theme and look at that as an example. And this is the same header from that project file. Um, so we have the, the theme name, which is the title of your theme. You could name it anything you want, a project or whatnot. Uh, the theme URI, that's the URL you would provide to your, your, your client where they could find information about that theme, version information, contact information. Uh, a, the following that is description, that's a short description. Uh, author information, in this case that would be your name and the domain of your website. Sometimes if you're working within a, uh, a larger company, the theme URI and the uh, author URI could, could vary. Uh, a version number, you'll notice that my version number is 1.0.1. I noticed some typos <laughs> in my, uh, in my uh, style sheet, so I went in and fixed it and uploaded another version. Uh, the license is the GNU public license for this, so you can feel free to use it any way you like. Uh, additional tags for the WordPress dashboard and uh, text domain. So all in all, this comment header is what will tell WordPress everything about your child theme that it will uh, need in order to activate it with the parent theme. Um, I think I skipped over the most important part. Right there in the middle, we have a uh, template um, reference. Without the uh, template reference, WordPress will not know what your child theme is based off of. So uh, that will tell WordPress uh, wh which parent to uh, look from. And that folder name is, um, that is actually the folder name in your directory of, of where 20, uh, the parent theme is. You don't have to use a parent theme that's pre-developed by some uh, group of people like WordPress.com, you could use child themes for your own projects. So if you've created your own theme, and let's say you need to run off a separate version for a custom homepage, you, can, uh, you could do that as a child theme and still benefit from your previous work. This is a little bit more complicated. I'm, I'm just gonna go over it really quickly because I, um, I realize it's not very easy to read. Uh, in functions.php, this is where you will tell WordPress where to grab the style sheets. So we're using the tags uh, add action with uh, WP NQ scripts. That's a little call out that WordPress uses to expect uh, JavaScript or CSS. It's used for both. You'll see uh, 2017 child NQ styles. That references the function below. And in this case, the function is actually pretty simple. Um, I'm going to tell my child theme that it needs to enqueue two style sheets in order. The first one is going to be the 2017 uh, style sheet. So you'll see that there is a reference to WP and Q style. 2017 style is the handle I'm giving it. And then there's a tag here, get template directory URI. What that's going to do is it's going to look into the template directory that we referenced in the previous slide. So it's going to look in the 2017 folder for the style.css uh, file. Following that, we do the, um, the uh, NQ uh, of the uh, child style sheet. And that one's very similar. We end up giving it a, a handle, this time uh, 2017 child style. Uh, and and um, then we're going to look at the style sheet directory for the child theme. So this is actually going into a different directory space, but they're both going to grab the uh, file by uh, the same name. Uh, the, the handles that are provided in the enqueue process are useful if you run into any problems. You could check your, your source code and see if it's going to the right location. So by checking the source code, it will label it 2017 child style. You'll click on that. If you get a broken link, then there's, there's going to be something wrong. And that's really all you need to create a very basic child theme that does effectively nothing, right? At this point, you've, you have an empty style sheet, and you have the parent theme style sheet, and that's it. You zip those up into a uh, zip archive 
upload and activate it. Um, now, in this process, I would highly suggest that you don't do this on a production server. You'd want to do it on a, a local host or in desktop server. Because if there's any mismatched uh, semicolons are my favorite in PHP, if I miss a semicolon or put it in the right wrong uh, place, I'll end up with a white screen of nothing and have to go in and delete the file to recover it. Or um, in a better scenario, I have a broken in queue. And this is an example of uh, there being some sort of style sheet mismatch. So in this circumstance, I purposely broke the parent in queue so that it couldn't find the parent theme's styles. And what it did do, though, was it still knew that 2017 was my template. So if you were to go into the dashboard, you could still treat it as though it was 2017, but it would never display right until, uh, until that in queue is fixed. Once it's fixed, you'll have something like this. It's a 2017 theme. Um, I'm sure we've all seen this uh, before. You'll notice there is a small difference in the custom logo right next to the header. That is a border radius that I added in my uh, stylesheet.css. That is the only change I made. That was my initial change on my child theme as I was building it out, just creating that uh, border radius. So uh, CSS is probably the most useful part of using child themes. If you want to make custom changes to a pre-existing uh, theme, the, uh, the style sheets will be contained within your style.css folder in one place. Now, when you're working with a, uh, a parent theme, you'll want to uh, grab a notebook and take notes onto what styles and classes do what within your, your parent theme so that you can override them later. So my favorite tool of using this is uh, browser inspection tools in Firefox, uh, although I'm only 4% of the internet that still uses Firefox, apparently. <laughs> so uh, it'll be OK. If you guys want to use Chrome, go right ahead. So in this case, I was doing some inspection because I wanted to change the headlines for my child theme. I didn't have anything against Libre Franklin, which is the font that uh, 2017 uses. I just uh, wanted something with serifs. So this is a way that I could customize the fonts uh, just using CSS. So some of the advantages of using uh, CSS in the child theme is what I've just stated. You could tweak the ty typography, the borders, the color. Uh, you can adjust negative space. So if you have ever worked with a theme that has a lot of white space in between paragraphs and you just want to tighten that up, you could do that within just the CSS of a child theme. Additionally, you can improve uh, readability. Um, visual accessibility is a big item right now, and I can't tell you how many times I've, I've found the perfect theme that is almost perfect, except the designer wanted to put gray on a gray background. So there's no way you're going to pass uh, AAA accessibility uh, checks with, uh, with that website. Um, hiding elements in CSS is extremely easy. I'm sure everyone here that's worked with CSS has done it. That's an easy way to just remove the little footer comment that's on the bottom of almost every theme about the person who created it. Um, and then, the, of course, there is portability. The one advantage of using um, cascading style sheets in your child theme is that it's not part of three different plugins or four different plugins, right? It's, it's all in this one file. So if you were to work on your local server and then finish it up and it's all perfect, you download it and then put it up to the live server and activate it and all your changes will be there. Now we're going to talk about uh, functions.php and what it's used for and maybe what it shouldn't be used for. But effectively, it's adding plugin-like functionality to support your theme. Um, it's best used for theme-specific improvements. So what I mean by that is adding a third or a fifth or a seventh menu to a website if you have a very menu-heavy website. Um, specific plugin support, let's say you need to add some support for advanced custom fields 
or your parent theme is using Jetpack and you're using it for a photo gallery. But like I did a few weeks ago, I discovered that Jetpack has it in this small little 720 pixel container and I'm doing a photo website that I want to be full width of the website. Well, you can go in there and you can override uh, Jetpack's uh, default styles within functions.php. Um, and it's, it works best for adjustments to functionality for the sake of your theme. So for ex I have a few examples coming up here. One of them is uh, open graph support. I started using uh, 2017 only a few months ago. Before that, I was really happy with 2016. So I just sort of stuck with it for two years. And one of the things I noticed when I jumped onto Twitter was that uh, my feature featured image wasn't showing up on uh, my tweets. Uh, and the way to fix that was to add open graph support. So I, I did a few um, tutorials. Uh, again, if you download my zip of my child theme, I have some URLs in there as to uh, how I did it, and you could look through that. But effectively, I added code into functions.php that allowed me to display my featured image if it was in my post, as well as my excerpt. And then if there was no featured image, which you see on the right, it would display my, my site icon. So that way, my, my tweets and post to uh, Facebook when I was on Facebook would, um, would be a little prettier. Another example is, uh, I referenced this earlier when I had replaced Google Fonts on my website. Um, I, I did this partly because I do a lot of web development while I'm disconnected from the internet. And the one thing that um, frustrates me the most is not having fonts render. So uh, one of the things I looked into was whether or not I can de uh, remove the Google Fonts callout to uh, the 2017 theme, which is uh, entirely possible to do. Um, and in this case, I added my own self-hosted fonts. So by um, adding the fonts to my child theme and then again into my CSS, I could self-host the, uh, the fonts on my, uh, on my server. So I, I know it's really hard to see uh, in the back, but if you do an inspection for fonts on my website at joseph-dixon.com, you will see that it's actually pulling the fonts from my, uh, my, my WordPress server rather than um, uh, a Google's API. The, uh, the secondary benefit of that is uh, Privacy Badger notices that there's no third-party trackers on my website. So, so you know, I get a green little box. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go into um, a template hierarchy for a little bit. And uh, followed by that, I'm also going to talk about template tags and then conditional tags. Template hierarchy is something that WordPress uses in theme development to tell WordPress which templates to use during certain circumstances. So um, a child themes template will always override the parent themes template. So if you have a page.php file in your child theme, it will override the page.php file in the parent theme. This is extremely useful for making small adjustments. You can copy the page.php file and, and make a little adjustment, maybe add some code for an advanced custom field for the advanced custom fields plugin, maybe like a, a text widget or something. You can add some additional menus, um, whatever you would need to do for your project. And it's really good for creating custom templates for your website. So an example with that, of that would be Let's say you're building a website for a photographer and he specializes in portrait photography and maybe wedding photography, architectural photography. They're all different types of photography, right? They have different audiences. So you could figure out a way, you could use child themes to create spe special templates for each category. And that will allow you to do some custom bits of code that will display additional information for each one. So imagine you're having a special on uh, architectural photography, right? And you want to provide a 20% discount to people who are uh, hiring you for that purpose. You could put that in your template 
and, and code it right in there. But you don't want to give that 20% for wedding photography. Likewise, if you're doing a wedding photography uh, site, you also want to tell people, okay, I'm only available on Saturdays for wedding photography. So you could put a little widget on your website through uh, your child theme template um, for the page or the post. This big monster is the template hierarchy in a graphical format. What we have on the right is uh, index.php. That is the one file every WordPress theme needs, and it is the file that will load when no other file is available. So um, what will happen here is that everything on the left will override everything on the right, effectively. Uh, the purple one is the defaults, the default uh, PHP files. The green ones are, are basic overrides, so at the top, we have author.php. And to the left of that, we have author-cache-symbol-id. Uh, if you ever look at the template hierarchy on the website, um, and it, it's a good idea to do, you can create custom templates for each author. So if you're building a website that has 12 different contributors and you want to customize it for each one, maybe add their, their Twitter account information or Patreon, you could do that uh, through the author ID process and, and a bunch of others. Uh, but what I'll discuss here is what I use template hierarchy most for in a project is changing the home page. I don't know what it is about the internet, but no one cares about what the inside of a website is when they're hiring you. They just want that home page to look a particular way and they'll let you just work on the rest. And I think it's kind of silly because the home page is probably one of the least important parts of a website when it really comes down to it. But let's say, let's say you have this great project and you just need to build a home page because you don't like 2017's home page styles. You can go in there and you can either do home.php, code it up any way you want, and that will override the home.php file. If for any reason um, you want to go even one level higher, you could use frontpage.php, which will override uh, home as well as any frontpage.php file that might be on the parent theme. This is fantastic for creating custom home pages, and I have probably got something like 65, 70 uh, child themes at the college I work at, and I kid you not, a good 70% of my child themes is just the home page. It's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so uh, um, template hierarchy comes in very useful for creating custom templates. You can add custom page templates uh, for different circumsti circumstances, different archive templates. So I had mentioned earlier about photography, with uh, category templates or tag templates. You could do that as well. Um, and you could even create conditional templates. And I'm going to cover that uh, closer to the end. Now, template tags are what is used within, the, uh, within a template. So when I mentioned the enqueue earlier, when, it, when I was directing it to look into certain folders within the WordPress directory, um, that was a, a kind of a sample of a template tag. What it essentially does is it will grab the information uh, that you have stored in your database or it will grab another template file. So you could use it dynamically or otherwise to grab information for your website. And so uh, there's a ton of information on WordPress.org at the template tags URL. They've got, oh man, I, don't, I haven't counted it, but there's got to be at least 200 there that do many, many different things, and some of them very similar. So an example of template tags would be uh, the title. That tells WordPress that you want to grab your post or page title from the, the poster page, and the title varies from get the title in the sense that it will post that title with an H1 tag around it and um, a, a class tag that says, uh, post title. The only problem with using the title is if you want to post an unordered list of, of posts and pages somewhere. Well, then that you would want to use get the title instead and use PHP to echo that out. Once you echo that out, you can just have it um, post just the title name itself 
and then you can code it up in some bold tags or hyperlinks or whatever. Likewise, the same thing happens with the excerpt. When you uh, use the excerpt to pull out information on your index file or your archive, it's going to add all of the, uh, the code that goes along with it. Or you could just echo the excerpt without any uh, HTML or stylings if you want to do something really custom. Conditional tags are a little bit different. These take a uh, Boolean statement in the sense that uh, if a condition is met, whether it's true or false, you can wrap your code around that statement. So um, these come in really handy when you're working with a template like a sidebar, a footer, or a header, and you want to check to see whether or not a particular page or post is being loaded. Um, and you could change a little message in there. So a good example of a conditional tag would be to check if you're on the home page. You would put this little check on your header.php file, and you can quite literally say echo a, a, a particular message or print a message on the website that says, welcome to the home page. You could um, use this to do all sorts of crazy, uh, wonderful stuff. You could do it um, to check for the home page, check for the front page. Those will look actually for the PHP versions of those files. And then you could wrap the code around those to see what they can do. Likewise, you can combine these statements and conditional tags together. So you could check to see if it's not the home page or if it's not the front page. And you could send a, a particular message that way. I've used it to um, check for whether or not it's a particular author page, um, or I've checked to see if, it, if a post has a particular tag or a particular category. And in this way, I've gone in and added class tags to the, uh, the website so that I can customize those particular uh, templates in my CSS accordingly. But what's most important about child themes is that you can use them to make the theme your own. Uh, uh, one thing I passed over way back at the beginning is if you put a uh, screenshot.png file in your child theme, that will give you the ability to take a screenshot of what the website looks like. So if you're providing a child theme to a dashboard of 20 installed themes, you could take a quick look at a glance at uh, every theme you have installed. If that file is missing, you'll end up with like a uh, Adobe Photoshop style grid, but it, it'll still work without it. And I went through that way too quick. <laughs> so, we're, uh, so we've got about, uh, geez, I think like 20 minutes left to go. Um, let's open it up to questions. I, I know I rushed through that really quick. Yes? I have a question just about in terms of the hierarchy. Where does the customizer fit in terms of uh, customizing CSS as opposed to customizing Or is it the same? Well, this is, uh, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because I purposely left the customizer out to try to avoid confusion. Um, I use the customizer to um, you're talking about CSS in the customizer. I use, the, I use that to override everything. So let's say you're working on a website and you're not quite ready to commit your CSS to your child theme just yet because you want to see if it actually works, air quotes. You can use the customizer to add the, um, add the code there, try it out for a couple days, and then if it, if it looks like it's working for you, pull it back into your child theme and, and update your child theme. Did that answer your question? It will override your child theme. So it's, it's the top level. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Bef uh, it will override your child theme if your CSS specification is high enough, because that's really what the override will do. Uh, next. Uh huh. Okay. Like 
I know exactly what you mean. I actually, I actually had a project at the college just a few months ago where um, I was working with an outside designer who relied on plugins and, and um, Visual Composer to build out the website. Uh, in that case, uh, I still used a child theme, but it didn't actually provide any framework. What it did was it provided the container for in which this developer was able to work uh, on, on their project for, or on her project. So, so um, what I had done in this process was I, I provided a fixed header and a fixed footer and instructed them that they can't change that information, but everything in between the two they could use with Invert Visual Composer any way they like. And it actually worked out pretty well. Um, so in that project, uh, she, she did use several plugins that had CSS and that had JavaScript, and Visual Composer throws in a lot of that stuff uh, when it displays. So yeah, it, it'll work with child themes. Did that, did that answer your question? Right. Um, well, I, I suppose the negatives depends on the circumstances of, of how your server is set up. Um, when you have a lot of plugins running on a website, that's a lot of JavaScript and in queues. And when a website loads, unless it's being um, cached using like a caching plugin like WP Super Cache, then um, it could take a little bit longer for the website to load. If your website doesn't get a ton of traffic and um, that extra half second essentially doesn't matter. The people going to your website will go there regardless of how long it takes to load. Then by all means, that half second or quarter of a second longer it might take isn't really that big a deal. Um, that's, that's, my, that's my professional answer. But my personal answer is I love to do these things in child themes so I could reduce the amount of time it takes the server to respond. Um, on the left. Oh, I'm sorry, in the back with the bald head. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so you're asking me about, I'm just repeating this for the video, you're asking me about how much code and how much work should you put into functions.php. Um, I try to keep it as minimal as possible. If you want to make a few small changes for the theme's sake, then you definitely want to put that in, in um, functions.php. If you want to add a really complex plugin, let's say something like an events calendar, that's going to be a huge project and a huge undertaking. And you won't want to necessarily do that on functions.php because you might want to container it, containerize it into a plugin because at some point you will update your website to another theme, right? So think of it this way. If you change themes tomorrow, is, is that feature, uh, feature going to be in the next theme that you choose pre-built in? And if the answer is yes, then, then you could leave it in functions. But if the answer is no, I'm going to have to add it anyway, then that would be a case for creating a, a, a plugin. And although I didn't mention plugin creation in this talk, it's actually very similar to using functions.php. I, I, I would just ch tend to suggest keeping it as simple as, pro uh, as possible when you get started until you get a hang for it, because that file can get really long very quickly. Um, any other questions? Let's see, uh, you in the on the left of the blonde hair. Sorry. Okay, so in terms of theme, so if I have a parent theme and then I have my child theme, and then we're talking about using the customizer, you said kind of do it temporarily and move it into the style sheet once you feel confident that that's what you want. So if I purchase a child theme and that developer occasionally does updates, would it be better to simply leave my CSS edits in the customizer so that way they're not overwritten when the, when the child theme developer releases an update? I have two answers for that. 
uh, first, I would say always back up your CSS and, and, and changes uh, somewhere else be beyond the customizer, just in case it gets lost when, when the theme switch happens. Uh, I think I've seen it happen, but I don't remember it actually happening to me. Um, you can make a child theme of a child theme. I didn't go into it because it kind of gets into this whole inception thing. But you, could, you can create a child theme of a child theme of a child theme, and you can keep on going if you needed to. So that's, that's always an option. It just means they have to enqueue a few more things. That way, if the person working on the child theme um, does push an update to their child theme, then, then your child theme will still have its styles in place. It will rely on that code, and you won't have to change anything. I kind of wish I had an example of that, because it's kind of a funny scenario. <laughs> OK, I saw some hands on the right. Yes? Back to functions. Um, let's say you take a, a Google font and you turn it off. Yeah. And then the update to the main theme got an option to turn it off. Mm -hmm. Which one to express it Well, that, OK, that, that is something I didn't cover. Um, one, of the, my, one of my concerns with, with working with child themes is when you remove features, like uh, removing Google Fonts, and, and let's say they give you that feature to add it back in, that will probably be broken on your child theme. So what you'll want to do at that point is decide to remove the functions.php reference to the, uh, to the fonts that you've added to your child theme. So it's kind of like an iteration process, right? Uh, if the feature becomes part of the parent theme, then there's really no reason to have that feature in your child theme anymore because you have more support work to do on it. So you could just essentially delete that part of the code, maybe archive it for another project later on. Uh, additionally, there are a lot of plugins that fit that need of inserting um, fonts into your website. So you could effectively say, okay, we decided to use this plugin because it's better than what I did, or what, what we did previously, because we want to change our, our fonts on the fly, and we kind of need a GUI, a, a GUI, uh, a physical GUI admin interface for it to make it easier for the client. Again, just delete it and, and use the, uh, the plugin. Um, yes? So, I'm going to apologize in advance because I'm not a developer. I don't know how to spell CSS. <laughs> um, you just did it. You just spelled CSS. Well, you, you update your child theme yourself. So the, the parent theme is somebody else's. You can look at it from this standpoint. The parent theme is somebody else's project, and the child theme is your project. So the only, one up, the only person updating the child theme is you. However, the parent theme will still re, re, uh, receive updates. So when you go into the WordPress dashboard two months from now, and your parent theme, if it's 2017, for instance, has pushed a major update, getting ready for Gutenberg on WordPress 5.0, then you could hit update knowing that your child theme adjustments will still be saved within your child theme. Um, did that answer your question? I think so. It, when you have a child theme, does it load or run like both the child and the parent theme? The, both of them run. Uh, something I forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about template hierarchy is that uh, templates the functions.php file for the child theme actually runs first. Everything else runs after the parent theme. Uh, so you're effectively running two themes on your, on your website. So the parent theme's still going to load? Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to have the parent theme installed. And it's just going to tweak your parent theme? Yes. Yes, what happens is you'll have your parent theme installed in your, in your themes portion of the admin dashboard, but the active, active theme will be the child theme. But they rely on each other in ta uh, uh, together to uh, publish the website. Okay. So it's not like if I create a child theme when the website loads, it's not going to load the parent theme, it's only going to load the child theme. It's going to... It's it's, it's going to load the child theme, and the child theme will tell it to go and look at the parent theme. Uh, you just have to make sure that the parent theme is installed. Uh, 
Another thing that I forgot to mention is that little template tag in the template.css that tells WordPress you're using a child theme. If you try to upload a theme and it has a reference to a template uh, parent theme and it's not installed, it'll tell you this theme isn't installed, would you like to install it? Especially if it's something that's in the WordPress directory. So you can kind of fix the problem going through. Yes? Um, my workflow is always to create a child theme, no matter what. Any small in the site. But there is a case that really I'm working right now which emphasizes this point. I've inherited a website okay. that uses a non responsive, obsolete theme. And the developers and designers have not done that. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they've done all the modifications in the theme, CSS, star CSS file. Right. So when I have done all the upgrades, when I switch to a responsive theme, the whole thing breaks down because everything is in the, the star. Yeah. So, 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 so what? what oh, sorry. Find a way to find out what part of it, the CSS has about 3,000 lines of code. I'm trying to find out what that original theme has in start to break these in two parts. Mm -hmm. So that when I switch the theme, uh, it will not break down the structure. So, and I was wondering if you've dealt with any thing like that, which really this case emphasizes why you need to have always chart, no matter what. Yeah, uh, uh, so what you're basically asking me is that you've inherited a website from another developer or designer that has a ton of CSS code, and you want to build a child theme that's responsive because the original website was not responsive. And they've got 3,000 lines of CSS, and it's going to take you a month and a half just to read it line by line. Um, there's no perfect answer for that. All I can tell you is to try to understand what the developers were thinking. Um, you can create a child theme of it and introduce um, media queries into your child theme that will move the sidebars around and everything. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be a lot of work. There's, there's no quick answer. Um, sometimes you might have to build a new parent theme and just start from scratch and make it look like the old website. You know what I'm saying? That might actually be less work building your own theme from scratch and then going and, and creating a child theme off of your own theme. So you could just throw that other stuff into an archive somewhere and, and back it up and never think about it for 20 years. <laughs> uh, any other questions? All right, I think, uh, did I catch everyone? It looks like I caught everyone. Okay, great. Uh, if you guys want to download uh, my slides or uh, the child theme that I created that I sort of referenced in this presentation, there's a lot of code references in there that kind of explain uh, everything that I was doing line by line. There's also a, a post that you could check out on my website as well. Thanks for your time, everyone. <laughs>